Hi, Tantus Nair van Jacobin, Lord and Emperor of the Jacobin Empire, and welcome. Today we're continuing our discussion on Earth Dawn. I'm going to go over some more basics of characters and start building up into character creation even more. But let's talk about some of the basic things that are on your character sheet you're going to recognize. What the heck do these mean? Of course, your character sheet is going to have your attributes. These are your natural abilities. It's going to list your skills, your talents, and your spells. I'll go into those in a little later in more detail to explain them a little better. It tracks your health, how much damage you've taken. It'll tell you what rate you go unconscious. You're going to have an unconscious uh, number, which tells you at what rate of damage you go unconscious. It's also going to tell you a death rating, which will tell you if that if your number amount of damage equals to or exceeds that, you die. You will also have a wound threshold. This says that whenever one single attack does X amount of damage, I take a wound. Wounds are serious injuries that are difficult to heal, so they take some time to heal, and give penalties to your character for having them. Effectively, they impair your character. So it's more than just the base loose injuries you're getting from the normals of combat. They're serious injuries, whether it be like a blo broken bone, a horrible gash above your eye, something like that. Now, the other concept I have to mention a little along with this is recovery tests. You get a limited number of these tests per day. That's the first thing you think about. And they're the ability that you have to recover from damage. You effectively make a recovery test and you recover some of that. You recover the damage and start healing up. You're effectively, that's what you're doing. You use a recovery test to heal up some of the damage you've taken to get into a position where you're ready to fight more. So let's dive into some of the more information that you have on the sheet. Now, almost all abilities have a rank. The rank represents how good you are at it, whether it's a skill or a talent. So your rank number plus your attribute step equals your skill step. Your skill step tells you how many dice you're rolling. There's an entire step chart in the book that for whatever step you are, you are rolling a set number of dice when you're making a test with that skill. It's, all, it's called your action dice, the dice that you're rolling. Now, the types of action dice there are, they're D6s, D8s, D10s, and D12s. It's going to be arranged on whatever step you're on from lowest dice to highest dice. When you are making a test for whatever skill you have the rank for, you roll all the dice together, you add them together, and that figures it out. This works for recovery tests, for skills, for talents, for anything that you are, it's telling you to roll a check. You're going to look on this chart to figure out what kind of dice you're going to use. Now, should you roll the highest number on a die, which means if I roll a d10 and I got to get a 10, I can roll another dice of that same type and add it to my number. And I can keep doing that. As long as I keep rolling 10s, I can keep rolling extra dice. And I really am rolling extra dice because I'm adding all these numbers together to figure out what I get. So I can get really lucky and get awesome because I'm rolling over and over again the maximum number. Now, steps one to three are rarely used. Only if you're getting a lot of penalties or if things are making you have negative to your normal step, what you would be doing, would you even consider rolling one to three? Now, all adepts, characters, they tap into magical energies. And this magical energy is known as karma. Now, karma is represented by your karma points and your karma dice. Karma points are things you can spend to do karma actions. Effectively, what it is is when I'm doing an action, I can spend karma to... I can spend a karma point to add my karma dice to it. Your karma dice is a d6. Effectively, it's step four. There are rare times where you can get higher than step four or lower than step four for your karma dice, but it will be listed and it usually has to either do with your son character or something that's going on. It's not going to be normal. So once I've spent my karma point, I get the d6, I add it to my dice pool, I roll it with the rest of my dice, if this D6 is maximum, I can continue to roll it like all the others, meaning I can continue to roll it over and over and over again if I keep getting sixes. I roll more of them effectively again. Now, as a starting character, you could only use karma on talents. So when you're rolling a talent check, then you can do it. Any other sort of ability that you have to use karma for it is unlocked at higher circles. So at higher circles, it unlocks more abilities to use karma on different things but you have to get to those circles in the first place to use them. So now let's talk about the de basics of a test. Swinging a sword, casting a spell, any of these things is going to be an action test. There's possibilities you can get bonuses and penalties these actions depending on the circumstances, what's going on, what your character gives. These bonuses and penalties represent bonuses and penalties to your step, not to any kind of the total roll to the actual step. They can reduce the step all the way to one, never below one. It can keep raising it above there if you get penalty, the bonuses. Again, as I said, penalties can give you at most one, bonuses can give you whatever. You can never go below one. You can keep going. They have, uh, the steps go all the way up to 40. 
Now, a lot of tests are against a difficulty number. This is some kind of number you're supposed to be meeting as the result of your test. So once you figure out what kind of die you're rolling, what step you're on, you roll those dice and you have a number that you have to meet or exceed in order to succeed. Now, there are also efficiency tests. A recovery test is an efficiency test. This, you're not trying to meet a target number. You're trying to see what you roll and seeing how well you roll and seeing what kind of success that gives you. Effectively, when you're rolling for your recovery test, you roll, see how well you did, subtract that number from your damage, effectively what you're doing. You're using that number to recover. You don't necessarily need to beat a target number. You don't have to beat the amount of damage you have. Regardless of how well you rolled, you still recover some from your roll. That's what an efficiency test is. Regardless of how well you've done, you're not needing a number. You make some kind of headway. You're being efficient with your roll. And the last thing I want to mention today is the rule of one. The rule of one says if I roll a one on all of my dice on a test, I fail automatically. Now, this is your GM's discretion that they can say if you're only rolling one die, they won't use the rule of one. I, as a GM, go for this too. I kind of believe that you're not going to punish someone because they only have one die. So if they have more than one die, then the automatic failure of more than one, it seems more reasonable because this is supposed to be very bad luck. And if I'm rolling a d6, I have a one in six chance of automatically failing. That's not really great. <laughs> it doesn't really feel like great that I'm like rolling, I'm like, oh crap, I'm kind of boned. Also, efficiency tests don't suffer from the rule of one. That's another note about the rule of one, other than the option of ignoring single dice rolls. Efficiency tests don't use it at all. So that's it for today. I've gone over some more of the basic rules, some, thing, some information from the character sheet you can find, some basic information about the tests you're going to roll and how they work. Next time, I'm going to go over some more basic rules that there are. There's still some that I want to go over, and then I will hopefully get into some of the basics of character creation, and we can start that. So if you have questions, comments, anything you want to say, anything you think I left out, please leave in the comments below. Please like, share, and subscribe. It shows your support for the channel, for the empire, for the work I do. And until the next time, I bid you farewell.